And as the world celebrates World Cancer Month, a non-governmental organization is embarking on campaigns to create awareness. The Medic Aid Cancer Foundation is also supporting cancer patients with funds for treatment as well as care. It's a group of diseases ravaging the world and Nigeria is no exception. A study published in 2009 says that cancer kills over 70,000 yearly in Nigeria and that more females die from the disease than male. The problem is treating cancer is very expensive and many suffering from the disease cannot afford the treatment. There is also low level of awareness. More often than not, the disease has reached advanced stage before it is diagnosed. We're here today in uh, the teaching hospital Guagualada to support cancer patients. The work that we do is mainly supporting cancer patients. We try to increase awareness in Nigeria. We try to advocate to government for better policies for cancer patients. And so, as we all know, in, uh, October being the International Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we raise funds and we try to support them financially. So today, that's why we have come to Guagualada to present the sum of uh, 2 million naira to the hospital as well as some extra palliatives individually hand-to-hand -to, -hand to the patients. We've seen the 10 patients that they think are indigent and need treatment and that money will make a difference too. Um, this visit means a lot to us as an institution uh, for various reasons. First, it is an encouragement that the little we do to care for the sick is appreciated by certain segments of the society. It is also a signal and in fact it is also a stimulus indeed to other organizations uh, because the disease condition we are talking about does not discriminate. It affects both the poor and the rich. Quite the rich might find a way or two to overcome in terms of treatment, cost, etc. The poor, uh, they suffer a double uh, jeopardy, I was put it. The, the, the disease condition is eating them and the pocket is also uh, biting them. And therefore, once we have organizations like the Medicaid Cancer Care come to their aid, now, the Medic Aid Cancer Foundation is embarking on a campaign to create awareness. The foundation is also supporting cancer patients with funds. Well, for more on this, uh, we're now being joined by the First Lady of Kebbi State, who is also the founder and CEO of Medic Aid Radio Diagnostic Center, Dr. Zainab Bagudu. Thank you so much for being here. And of course, thank you so thank much for you all that you're doing, America. you know, not just for the treatment of those who already have cancer in Nigeria, but also the awareness creation. Mm -hmm. And let's have this conversation right now. I'm looking at the data and it says, Nigeria has less than 90 clinical oncologists to take care of the cancer patients in the country. How much of a challenge is this? Looking at the fact that we're seeing more cancer, uh, you know, diagnosis every year in the country. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me, Amaka. Uh, it's a, it is a problem, but you're starting at the high end of the problem. The low end of the problem is awareness and the understanding uh, of our people to know that they have ways in which to avoid cancer and when they get it, how do they go about navigating to get to those even just 90 uh, oncologists that we have? So uh, the, the low hanging fruits would be how to create more awareness. And it is a big problem because we are diagnosing more cancer because of the increasing risky lifestyles that we're living, uh, uh, smoking, drinking excessive alcohol, um, sexually transmitted diseases that cause cervical cancer, and then also lack of screening. We do not have uh, an institutionalized screening test in our country, so that causes uh, a problem. And majority of the Nigerians live in the rural areas where their understanding of any complex disease is quite low and poor. And uh, it's a problem getting them to understand that you need to go to the hospital when you have this illness. You're talking about the rural areas, but even in the urban areas, I do know that I did a story not so long ago about 80% of the young ladies who I spoke to, I'm talking from the age of 16 to maybe about 50 or so, 
have never had a mammogram or a pap smear. Because mm. when we talk about cancer, you're talking early detection. Yes. Why is this a challenge for people to really go get tested in the country? Which is, it brings me back to the same answer I gave. It's about awareness. They don't know. And it's about poor facilities, availability of those facilities close by, and an institutionalized system that calls you up. If you're born in the United Kingdom from the age of eight, first of all, you get a vaccine. Mm. From that age, you're being, you're being sensitized about cervical cancer and what this vaccine is for. Even if you don't understand it fully, eventually it will come. You will see your book and say, oh, I've gotten the HPV vaccine. And then at a certain age for the different cancers, over there for breast cancer from the age of 50, you get a call-up letter asking you to come and do your mammogram. But for the pap smear, once a female is sexually active, but the pap smear is also, I think, about 45 to 50 over there. But for us, there's nothing like that, despite wow. the fact that we have the technology, we have mobile phones that work in most of the villages, and but it's just the system by the government to be able to call them up. And then when we call up, who is paying for it? Exactly. Yeah, who is going to pay for it? Which brings us into another end of the disease, health insurance. Mm. The NHIS covers some care for cancer, but not all. And we have been, uh, one of the things that the Medicaid Foundation has been doing is to advocate and influence policy at a high level so that we can get the organized agencies like the NHIS to include cancer care in the treatment package, in their packages, the insurance packages. And there's been a lot of success, I must say. Uh, the tests are clearer now, what you can get. So is the treatment, surgery, chemotherapy, and even some radiotherapy. It's not ideal, and as we know, the insurance doesn't cover everybody. Uh, some states have health insurance, most states don't. Their, their formal sector is covered. The informal sector, what happens Which to is where we farmers? get bulk of the women, especially exactly. in the rural areas. Exactly. So how do we bridge the gap right now to really get these women to go in to have this test done? Because mm. even for a lot of people who are on, in the urban areas, mm. they don't feel this test is necessary mm. most of the time. Mm. Mm. It's a shame, really, and we have to start educating earlier. And uh, there's so many ways in which we can do that. It doesn't, what we're doing now, hopefully, is education. And when you see the catastrophic effect that cancer has on families, then maybe that will help. So another way we advocates use is to tell stories. Tell stories of the people that have been hit by cancer. And we tell both the negative and the positive story. And it really helps. It definitely helps. Mm. But you know what? At the end of the day, let's like it like it or not, like you have highlighted, mm. the health insurance doesn't cover bulk of the cancer treatment and even the test and it is still expensive here mm. in Nigeria. Mm. So let's talk about prevention. Cancer, unfortunately, we're seeing more and more cases mm. in the country, like you mm. have highlighted. Mm. The lifestyle changes that we're mm -hmm. seeing with generations mm. coming up. But how can we tame cancer cells before they become problematic? Well, it's by getting rid of them by picking them early. The, uh, the mantra is early detection saves lives. And this is true. We have a very poor outcome in low middle income countries like Nigeria uh, because of the late stages that the cancers are detected. But the same cancer detected in a country like Canada will have a 95% cure rate for breast cancer, for instance. Whereas if you're born in Nigeria, your chances of surviving it are between 25 to 40 simply because of the late stages that it is picked up. I still see, we see on a regular basis, just last weekend, we saw really bad breast cancer, a fungating mm. breast mass, and you don't believe that in the year 2021 that kind of thing exists, but it does, mm. and we see it often. So there, there's so much to do about this awareness, and our, our community gatekeepers, apart from the political leaders and the doctors, the community gatekeepers, the religious leaders, the emirs, the chiefs, the matron in the, in, in, in the primary health care center. Another one I found very useful of late are the coaches. You know those coaches, the area coach, those children, they listen to them sometimes Absolutely. more than even their parents. So if we get them together and run programs that we can educate them on, then it helps. But we're such a large country. 
we've been at this for 13 years and I, it's like we haven't even scratched the tip of the iceberg. And there's so many other organizations like us that are doing a very good job in the same thing. But it's a lot of work but, uh, and the, really the solution lies in improving our educational system, improving access to health insurance and improving the level of our, the, or the sophistication of our health facilities. Don't forget subsidizing the cost of this test because a woman who's thinking mm. about feeding her children, she's not thinking mm. about how to go get tested. Yeah, yeah. But it's a good thing that Medicaid, which you are actually the CEO, you're, mm -hmm. you're doing something, you know, especially mm. this uh, cancer month really yes. to raise awareness and also subsidize the cost yes, for testing. Yes, Let's yes. talk about that real quick. So what we do is we raise funds all through the year uh, through various methods, events like the work that we had today. It's a massive work that is had in Abuja, and it's sponsored by various high net worth individuals, corporate uh, bodies, partners, different agencies, and they sponsor the work. We also sell work merchandise, and that is where we raise uh, the most money that we raise all through the year. Uh, last year was COVID, but it wasn't as great, but we did manage to raise some money, and that is what we use to help the patients. We have different disbursements. We have take their forms, their medical reports, and it's not limited to one area. Our patients come from all over the country. They, you don't have to be from where we're uh, operating in. And um, aside from that, we, we, we use the month to talk about breast cancer especially, and uh, it educates women so that they can know what to do. And it's, it's been very helpful and impactful, I must say. And of course, uh, subsidized rates uh, oh, in yeah. all of your facilities are here. Yes, 50%. yes, we, Women we, can we get slash that. it. So yeah. that, that kind of thing is uh, something that we do regularly as well to encourage the women to come in. A test that is usually 12,000 Naira, and you can get it for 5,000 Naira. Surely that should be an encouragement to get it done if you have never done it before. Especially if you see the devastating effect of cancer. Exactly. And breast cancer for one, 22% is what we're seeing in Nigeria yes. for all the yes. cancer uh, 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 registered in the country. But what more Going really up. can the government do? Because we've talked about a lot of things, awareness and all that, mm. where NGOs like yourself are stepping mm. in. Mm. But at the government level, Mm. be it at the federal, state, and local government level. What mm. more can we be doing, really, to fight cancer? Because we never used to hear as much cases as we hear these days, but it's here to stay. Well, in a way, that's a good thing. We're talking about it. That means we're diagnosing it to call it cancer. And so it's coming out more. Yes, the numbers are getting more, but it's because of the increasing awareness. Where we are today is definitely not where we were 10 years ago. Even from the governmental side, I'm not going to say enough has been done because we do need so much more to be done. The ultimate responsibility of coordinating all these responses lies with the government of any nation. So there can be 10 NGOs, hundreds of NGOs, hundreds of donor agencies, but the government has to find a way of coordinating all these responses, having the right policies to help them along. And um, we have had some success, but there's still more that needs to be done. Dr. Zainab Bagudu there would have to say thank you so much for all thank that you're you. doing. Really, thank we want you, to call Amaka. her the cancer champion in Nigeria. Thank you so much for stopping by tonight on the program. Yeah.